Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel Series. Today, we'll be looking at a 14.5 inch Colt SOCOM barrel that was manufactured in April of 2015. So, this will have a bit of historical perspective to it, I suppose. This barrel was generously loaned to the channel by a subscriber and is in unfired condition. We'll get started by going over the specs, then we'll take a closer look at things with an inspection. After that, we'll go over the shooting setup, and then we'll head to the range to shoot some 30-shot groups. All right, starting with the specs, this is a 14.5 inch barrel that was made from Ford 150 chromoly vanadium steel with a chrome line chamber and bore and a phosphate exterior. It has a carbon length gas system, 5.56 NATO chamber, 1 to 7 twist, 0 0.750 gas block journal, half by 28 threads, and this barrel included a front sight base. Moving on to the inspection, we will start out with the weight, and this barrel weighs 1.89 pounds, which puts it at 0.130 pounds per inch of barrel length making it among the heavier profiles that I've measured so far. The gas board accepted a 62 thousandths pin gauge, which is about right for a 14.5 barrel with carbine gas. The barrel extension diameter measures on the larger side out of the ones that I've measured so far, having among the tightest clearance with the upper receiver, which should make for a nice tight fit when it's installed. The gas block clearance is right around average compared to the other ones that I've measured, which should make for a sufficient gas seal with the gas block. Next, we'll do some gauging, starting with the throat erosion gauge, and this barrel is at a 1 on this gauge. Next, we'll use a 5.56 NATO chamber dimensions gauge to make sure the chamber is at least minimum size, and the barrel passes. Next, we'll check headspace, starting with a Forster 5.56 NATO minimum headspace gauge and a new stripped JP bolt, and the barrel passes. Here is a 2.23 no-go gauge, and this bolt is barely able to close on this gauge. Anyway, moving on to the 2.23 field gauge, and the barrel passed with this gauge and this bolt. All right, now we'll take a look at the inside with my test long bore scope. And we'll start out with the chamber. And there's not a whole lot to see here. It looks like there might be some cross hatching. So the chamber might have been honed or something. And here's a quick straight view of the chamber just to get a different perspective on things. And again, nothing looks to be obviously out of place. I don't see anything that would give me a significant concern. And moving up to the throat, the throat looks to have been cut with a reamer and it looks to be a little bit uneven. Not too bad compared to the others I've seen, but there looks to be some room for improvement. And there's also a bit of roughness on the right side of the rifling lands. Again, nothing too bad compared to the others that I've seen, but still room for improvement. Here's a comparison with an FN barrel, and to me, the FN barrel looks to have a bit more roughness to it compared to the Colt, and both of these are chromed barrels. And here's another comparison with a Seekins barrel, which was made from 416R stainless steel, and the throat on the Seekins looks to be quite a bit smoother than the Colt. Moving up to the rifling, you can see some copper from the factory test fire, but the rifling looks fine to me. I don't see anything that would give me a concern. And here's the gas port, which has an internal chamfer, which is a nice touch that I don't see very often. So that's nice to see. And last here is the crown. And this looks to be a little bit more rough than what I would like to see. I can see a little bit of jackedness on the leading edge of the crown. Again, it certainly isn't the worst cut crown that I've seen, but I've also seen better. Anyway, next up, we'll go over the shooting setup. As far as I can determine, Colt does not have a listed break-in procedure for this barrel, so no break-in was performed. The barrel was fitted into a Colt cage code upper with a BCM MCMR rail and a BCM bolt carrier group. When assembling the upper, the threads were greased and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's specification. To increase rifle stability during shooting, the handguard was fitted with a 3-inch front bag rider and the stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5-2 buffer and Sprinco green spring. No muzzle device was used to prevent possible interference. The lower has a Geisley super dynamic enhanced trigger. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before starting the first group. Scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Magnification was set to 20. Parallax was set using a head nod test. A Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite was mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots. This simulates a match or other practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it and also gives us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cool down. Distance was 100 yards. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Today, I'll be shooting three groups. First will be IMI Razor Core 77 grain. Next will be AAC 77 grain OTM. This is from their 2700 foot per second box, which I purchased in March of 2025. And last will be 55 grain Winchester M193. All right, let's do it. Okay, starting things out with the IMI Razor Core. This load doesn't usually give me the tightest groups, but the velocity is usually on the higher side. 
It's rated to the same velocity as Black Hills Mark 262, which is 27 to 50 out of a 20 inch barrel. So at least it has that going for it. Also, for having a 77 grain Sierra Match King Bullet on top, it's fairly inexpensive for what it is, but we'll see how it performs here. Anyway, shooting felt fine on my end. I felt like I shot to my potential at least, and I didn't feel like I shanked any of the shots. I forgot to turn on the chrono for the first four shots, so my fault on that. Ejection looked pretty consistent at around 3.30 or so. Wind was pretty calm for this group, so that shouldn't factor much into the results. And we end up with a bit of an interesting group. It's a bit of a donut looking group with basically no shots in the middle and basically making a ring. I've seen this a few times before, but it's still pretty odd. Anyway, we'll finish up here and then take a closer look. The Colt Solcom had an average velocity of 2,632 feet per second, which is right around what I would expect for the Razor Core out of a 14.5 inch barrel, and velocity standard deviation looked pretty good at 14 with an ES of 63 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.3. Shot 5 was the slowest and shot 27 was the fastest. And looking at the individual shot velocities, nothing looks to be significantly out of place. Looking over at the group, we ended up with a donut with no shots in the middle. So that's kind of weird looking. Other than that, things look pretty good. Although shot five looks to be a bit farther outside of the group than the rest. Before we go over the group stats, we'll go over my AZ score for the new folks. AZ stands for A zone equivalence distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A zone. The reason why I use this score is because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers compared to looking at the raw mean radius numbers. Moving on to the group numbers, 30 shot group size ended up at 2.877 MOA with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.754 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 187 yards. Or if you want some more conventional numbers to look at, if we take the 30 shot group and break it down into three 10 shot groups, all of the 10 shot groups were between 2.2 to 2.3 MOA. And if we want to compare the Colt Slocom barrel to the other barrels that I've shot with the IMI Razor Core, the Colt comes in 11th place out of 12 groups with this ammo. Since the group was a bit of a donut with no shots in the middle, that really hurts the mean radius score and therefore the AZ score, but it is what it is. Anyway, let's get to the next group. Before moving on, I would like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content and found it useful, it would help a lot if you could tip the channel with a $2 super thanks so I can buy more ammo and equipment to help grow the channel. Thanks, let's get back to it. Okay, so next up is the AAC 77 grain OTM. Again, I bought this ammo quite a few months back and the box states that it's rated for 2,700 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel. And to my knowledge, PSA is not currently producing the SKU due to a powder shortage. And this ammo has been replaced with a 2,550 feet per second rated variant. So in short, I don't believe that this ammo is currently available. Anyway, I'll have a more expansive video coming out about this ammo and the new variant in a little while. I had an unexpected complication in producing that video that cost me a bit of time. So that video is taking longer than expected. But with this group, the shooting felt fine on my end, except for shot 30, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Both the Chrono and Mantis captured data from every shot. Wind remained calm for this group. Ejection looked pretty consistent at between 3.30 to 4 o'clock. Recoil felt fine, and there's not much else to say about this group. So we will finish up and then take a closer look. All right, so the AAC 77 grain out of the Colt SOCOM have an average velocity of 2,411 feet per second, which is over 200 feet per second slower than the IMI, which also shot a 77 grain bullet. But in my experience, that's about right for this lot of AAC 77 out of a 14.5 inch barrel. Velocity variation wasn't too bad though, with an SD of 18 feet per second and an ES of 73 feet per second. Average rifle stability was 99.6, but we did have one shot that was a bit unstable at 98.6, which was shot number 30, and I agree with that. That shot didn't feel great on my end when I broke the shot, but I got lucky, and it ended up relatively close to the center of the group. Looking at the velocities, shot 18 was the slowest, and shot 26 was the fastest, and then looking at the group, it looks a bit ugly, but it's relatively evenly distributed for what it is, I guess. Moving on to the group numbers, the 30-shot group size was 4.038 MOA, with a 30-shot mean radius of 1.104 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 128 yards. And if we break that down into 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 2.1 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 3.0 MOA. And if we compare the Colt SOCOM to the other barrels that are shot with the 2700 foot per second box of AAC 77 grain, it comes in eighth place out of 11 groups with an AZ score 10 yards behind the Daniel Defense in seventh place and 64 yards behind the Hodge barrel, which is the highest ranked chrome line barrel on this leaderboard. And with that, we will start the next group.
Okay, here's the last group we're going to look at today. This is Winchester M193 55 grain FMJ. And if you have been following the series at all, my results with this lot of ammo have been all over the place. So we'll see what the Colt can do with this uh, M193. Wind was still calm for this group. Shooting felt fine again on my end. Recoil continued to feel better than expected for this barrel. Ejection looked nice and consistent at around 330. The Garmin captured velocities for all the shots. And the Mantis missed three shots. And things ended up looking not too bad for M193. Certainly not the tightest group in the world but not too bad for what it is. Anyway, we will finish things up here and then take a closer look. All right, so the Winchester M193 out of the Colt SOCOM had an average velocity of 2,991 feet per second, which sounds about right for this load. And look at that, the velocity variation. The velocity SD was 30 feet per second with an ES of 161 feet per second, which sounds about right for Winchester M193. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.5 and a low score of 99.1. Looking at the individual shot velocities, shot 4 was the slowest by quite a bit at 81 feet per second slower than the average, and shot 27 was the fastest at 80 feet per second faster than the average. And looking over at the group, we have somewhat of a cluster in the middle, and then it fans out quite a bit from there. Looking at the group numbers, we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 4.116 MOA and a 30 shot mean radius of 0.908 MOA which gives us an AZ score of 155 yards. And if we break things down into 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 2.1 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 3.2 MOA. And comparing this to the other groups that I shot with Winchester M193, the Colt Solcom did really good. Coming in first place out of 11 groups with its AZ score of 155 yards, which is seven yards better than the Proof Research Barrel, which came in second place with an AZ score of 145 yards. So, a pretty solid performance for the Colt. And here's a look at the overall results. Keep in mind that I am not a perfect shooter, and that all of these groups could have likely been at least a little bit better. Also, the barrel may prefer a different ammo, and of course, this is only one example. So, different Colt Silicon barrels might perform better or worse. The Colt shot the best group with the IMI Razor Core, which had an AZ score of 187 yards, and that is followed by the Winchester M193, with an AZ score of 155 yards. And the worst group of the day was with the AAC 77 grain OTM, which had an AZ score of 128 yards. All of the velocities were similar to other 14.5 barrels that I've shot with this ammo. And I'll just quickly point out the difference in velocity between the IMI and AAC, which are both shooting a 77 grain bullet. The IMI is over 200 feet per second faster than the AAC, which I would say is a pretty significant difference. But the velocity SDs for the AAC and IMI were both pretty solid. So there's that, I guess. Anyway, I think that'll do it for this one. I have a lot more stuff coming, so make sure you're subscribed. And I'll see you next time. Later.